this video, we'll look at how to post-process results from Simvasky simulation. We'll look at one of earlier simulations on a Glenn geometry, which had a steady inflow and a resistance outflow boundary condition with rigid wall assumptions. Under SV simulation tab, open a sub tab called convert results and make sure that the result directory is pointing to your, to the location where you have the results stored. In steps, uh, because we had run a steady simulation up to 100 time steps, post-process just the final time step, make start equal to 100, stop equal to 100 increment equal to zero and of course we want results on the volume mesh and the surface mesh so make buttons are turned on and rest of the things can be left as they are click on convert make sure you route it to the directory where you want the results written i want the results written under the simulation directory so i'll choose the same directory as the place where we have restarts say choose and Simvascular will start convert restart.files into vtk compatible file formats which we will then load into paraview and visualize our results. If your conversion was successful, you should see a window that says finished and results have been converted. Click on OK. Open Paraview and load the results. So if you click on open under file, you'll see there is a folder called Glen underscore steady underscore resistance underscore converted hyphen results, which is where all the results have been written. If you double click on that folder, you can see all these VTU, VTP and text files that were generated from the restarts of your simulation. We will load these two files, all results 100.vtp, all results 100.vtu into Paraview. As soon as you've done that, click on apply and you can see the visualization in this window here. Remember that the VTU here is a volume mesh and the VTP is a surface mesh. So if you're looking at pressures, you can use a surface or a volume mesh. Uh, notice that the pressures are in 9 per centimeter square here because the simulation was set up in 9 per centimeter square. To convert them to clinically relevant quantities so that it's easier for interpretation, we'll use this calculator filter, do the conversion using the calculator. So you say the new result, which I'll name as pressure underscore millimeter mercury, is pressure divided by 333, which is the conversion factor from 9 per centimeter square to millimeter mercury. Click on apply. You have a new color bar on the right side. Because I don't want the old color bar, I'll hide it. Um, also, you can see that now the pressure is in millimeter mercury and it's close to the Venus pressure of 5 millimeter mercury. You can also see that the pressure is higher on this side of the model compared to this side of the model. Of course, if, if you go back and look at your resistance values, you will notice that the resistance values were higher on this side of the pulmonary tree. If you want to visualize the wall shear stress in this model, go to the drop down menu on top and change it to VWSS. Again, you want this color scheme to be distinct from the pressure distribution you had, so we will make it blue to red rainbow, which is what is commonly used to display your wall shear stress. Click on apply, close this window. Also, you want these numbers to be within clinically relevant range. So we'll rescale it to a custom range and say we'll display all values that are between 0 to 15 per centimeter square. Click on rescale and you should see a wall shear stress distribution that looks like this. See that the distribution is patchy, which means that there's probably a need for mesh refinement on this geometry. So we will have to run the simulations with better mesh resolution. Uh, let's keep marching with the post-processing. We have, the, the VTP is a surface mesh. So if you want to visualize velocities, probably you're better off working with the VTUs, which is a volume mesh. So let me toggle the visibility on the VTP so that this model goes away and turn VTU on. Again, this is uh, showing us pressure, but instead we want to post-process velocity. So I'll go to the scroll down menu and change this to velocity. Again, we'll scale this, get it close to the inflow values. So I'll make this 25 scale. You can notice that clearly the velocity is zero everywhere on the wall because we had a rigid wall boundary condition. On the other hand, you can see that the velocity is much higher at the inflows and the outflows. So this is a sanity check in your simulations. You need, um, if you go around and look at all the velocity values at the outflows, um, see if it's non-zero. We have the velocity distributions at the interface, but we want to look at the velocity distributions inside the model. So to do that, we will look at a bunch of filters within Paraview. Let's look at the slice filter first, in which we'll define a plane like this and angle it and set it up to pass through a region of interest. 
So you can use the edges to orient the plane and this middle section to translate. So I want to check if my inflow velocity was parabolic as I had set it in a simulation. So we'll take a slice at the inflow and click on apply. Again, uh, it's displaying pressure here. I want velocity instead. So I'll click on velocity and you can see the velocity at a plane that's close to the inflow. I like to visualize this with the model. So turn the uh, visibility on the model on and reduce the opacity of the model so that I can look at the inflow plane as well as the slice. Although one can uh, say that this looks like a parabolic profile in a single plane, it's much easier if we can look at the velocities or warp them to determine if it's parabolic flow. So to do that, we will use a warp filter within Paraview and say warp by vector. Now for better visualization, I'll change the scaling to 0.05 and make sure that the vectors say velocity so that this surface gets warped by the magnitude of its velocity and click on apply. Again, this warp by vector is showing pressure, which is the default entry. We will change that to velocity. You want to see the color bar on the warp by vector, not on all results. So click on all results to hide the color bar here. Click on warp by vector. And if you click on color bar again, you will see the corresponding color bar for velocity magnitude. Again, I'll rescale it to a value that's close to the inflow value click on rescale and now you can clearly see that the inflow velocity profile is actually parabolic or close to parabolic. Another filter that I like to use within Paraview to visualize velocity are these stream tracers which essentially traces streamlines for the flow. Again make sure you are on this .vtu file when you click on the stream tracer filter. To work with the stream tracer filter tweak a bunch of settings here so you can prescribe a line source or a point source. I like to use a point source. Let me hide the warp by vector so that we can work with the stream tracers more easily. Point source gives you this glow, which is essentially where all the points are seeded for your streamlines. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that the glow is large enough to cover the in inlet of the model. And at the same time, make sure that it's inside the model because you want your point sources for the streamlines to be inside the model. And I will change the uh, number of points to 2000 so that we have enough streamlines and click on apply. When you click on apply, you should see streamlines that look like this. Again, this is colored with pressure. We'll change that to velocity. Also scale the velocity close to the inflow value on rescale. Also, I, I want to use a different color scheme for this. So I'll again pick a blue to red rainbow, click on apply, close. And this is stream flow visualization of flow within your plane geometry.